कपोति प्रथम गर्भ गृहनती काल आगते अंडा शुशुवे निधे सपतायु सन्निधौ सती कपोति प्रथम गर्भ गृहनती काल आगते अंडा शुशुवे निधे सपतायु सन्निधौ सती कपोति प्रथम गर्भ गृहनती काल आगते अंडा शुशुवे निधे सपतायु सन्निधौ सती माताजी कपोती द फीमेल द फीमेल पिजन प्रथमम ह फर्स्ट गर्भम प्रेगनेंसी गृहनंती कैरिंग काले व्हेन द टाइम फॉर डिलीवरी आगते हैड कम Andani, eggs. Sushuve, she delivered. Nidhe, in the nest. Sapatayu, of a husband. Sanidhau, in the presence. Sati, the chaste. So today, so today will be. taking the shlokas from verse 57 to 74 there are around 17 shlokas so i was a, i was asked to read all the translation of all the 17 shlokas so text uh, 57 the translation is as follows then the female pigeon experienced her first pregnancy when the time arrived the chaste lady delivered a number of eggs within the nest in the presence of her husband next uh, shloka when the time was ripe baby pigeons with tender limbs and feathers created by the inconceivable potencies of the lord were born from those eggs next shloka the two pigeons became very affectionate to the children and took great pleasure in listening to the awkward chirping which sounded very sweet to the parents thus with love they began to raise the little birds who were born of them the parent birds became very joyful by observing the soft wings of the children they chirping their lovely innocent movements around the nest and their attempts to jump up and fly seeing the children happy the parents were also happy their hearts bound to each other by affection the foolish birds completely bewildered by the illusion energy of lord vishnu continued to take care of the young offspring who had been born of them One day the two heads of the family went out to find food for the children being very anxious to feed their offspring properly they wandered all over the forest for a long time 
At that time, a certain hunter who happened to be wandering through the forest saw the young pigeons moving about near their nest. Spreading out his net, he captured them all. The pigeon and his wife were always anxious for the maintenance of the children, and they were wandering in the forest for that purpose. Having obtained proper food, they now returned to the nest. When the lady pigeon caught sight of her own children trapped within the hunter's net, she was overwhelmed with anguish, and crying out, she rushed towards them as they cried out to her in return. The lady pigeon had always allowed herself to be bound by the ropes of intense material affection. And thus, her mind was overwhelmed by anguish. Being in the grip of the illusion energy of the Lord, she completely forgot herself. And rushing forward to her helpless children, she was immediately bound in the hunter's net. Seeing her own children, who were more dear to him than, his, than, than life itself, Fatally bound in the hunter's net, along with his dear most wife, whom he considered equal in every way to himself, the poor male pigeon began to lament wretchedly. The male pigeon said, Alas, just see how I am not destroyed. I am obviously a great fool, for I did not properly execute pious activities. I could not satisfy myself nor could I fulfill the purpose of life. My dear family, which was the basis of my religiosity, economic development, and sense gratification, is now hopelessly ruined. There is a purport to this. We'll read the purport also. Srila Sridhar Swami explains that the word atrapatya indicates that the pigeon was not satisfied with the sense gratification he had achieved. Although he was completely attached to his wife, children, and nest, he could not sufficiently enjoy them since there is ultimately no satisfaction in such things. Akratasya indicates that his hopes and dreams for future expansion of, sen of his sense gratification were now also ruined. People commonly refer to their home, sweet home, as the nest and money put aside for future sense gratification is called a nest egg. Therefore, all of the love birds of the material world should clearly note how their so-called wife, children, and fortune will all be dragged away in the hunter's net. In other words, death will finish everything. Transition of the next verse. My wife and I were an ideal match. She always faithfully obeyed me and in fact accepted me as a worshipable deity. But now, seeing her children lost and her home empty, she has left me behind and gone to heaven with our saintly children. Now I am a wretched person living in an empty house. My wife is dead. My children are dead. Why should I possibly want to live? My heart is so pained by separation from my family that life itself has become simply suffering. As the father pigeon wretchedly stared at his poor children trapped in the net and on the verge of death, pathetically struggling to free themselves, his mind went blank and thus he himself fell into the hunter's net. The cruel hunter, having fulfilled his desire by capturing the head pigeon, his wife and all of the children set off for his own home. In this way, one who, is, one who is too attached to family life becomes disturbed at heart, like the pigeon. He tries to find pleasure in mundane sex attraction. Busily engaged in maintaining his own family, the, mis the, misery, the miserly person is fated to suffer greatly along with all his family members. In the last sloka, the translation, the doors of liberation are open wide to one who has achieved human life. But if a human being simply devotes himself to family life, like the foolish bird in the story, then he is to be considered as one who has climbed to a high place only to trip and fall down.
ओम ज्ञानते विनंदस्य ज्ञानं जना शलाकया चक्षुलो मिलितं जेना तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभेस्तं स्थापितमेन भूतले स्वयं रूपा गदामाद्य तदाति स्वपदामितं वन्दे हम श्री गुरु श्री युक्ता पदकमलं श्री गुरु वैष्णवं शा श्री रूपं सागरजातं सहगना रघुनाथं तम सजीवं साधुवैतं साधुबुद्धं परिजना सहित कृष्णचैतन्यदेवं श्री राधा कृष्णपादं सहगना ललिता श्री विशाकामितं शा हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीना बंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्तकंचन गौरांगी राधे विंदा वनेश्वरी विश्वभानु सुते देवी प्रणामी हरि प्रिये वंचा कल्पत्रु वैशा कृपा सिंधु एवंचा पतिता नाम पावने बियो वैष्णवे बियो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्या प्रभु नित्यानंदा श्री अद्वैता गदाधा श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्तविंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामो हरे रामो 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा so I seek the blessings of all the symbol Vaishnavas so that I am empowered to speak something. If uh, one reads the, all through these 17 slokas, basically they revolve around family and family attachment. Now, say when a young couple before marriage, uh, they attracted to each other, then the engagement happens, then the marriage, day, marriage date is fixed. Then both this couple, the young male and female, they look forward for that marriage day. And uh, they're very excited about it. And then on the marriage day, uh, they are very happy. The marriage happens. Then they go on honeymoon also. Then they, were, they are very happy. They're happy for a month, few months, maybe a year, two years, three years. Then after that, that marriage syndrome starts fading out. Then they, there are more clashes. Then they see the challenges more frequently of the Grihastha Ashram. And as time goes, they basically, they start tolerating just each other. And uh, sometimes they're divorces also because there's so much difference of opinion. In fact, uh, some marriage experts say, they define marriage. They define marriage as an institute of adjustments. I repeat again. They define marriage as an institute of adjustments. Now, if to a young couple who's just going to get married, you tell them this definition, they will not relate to it. But that same couple, after 15 years, if they live through, you tell them the same definition, they'll give three stars to the statement. Basically, um, the scriptures say that the family life, Krasth Ashram, there are many, many challenges, many challenges. Uh, like, uh, I give, I, mean, I, I counsel families also, I give parenting seminars all over India. Married people come to me for counseling, for inputs. Um, I will just tell you that some of the challenges which is faced in the family life. There is one family which I'm aware of. The son is around seven years old. So the son, he locked himself in a room. And he was not opening the door. So his parents, they were anxious. They told him, Beta, open the door. Son, open the door. He was not opening. 10 minutes gone, 15 minutes gone, half an hour gone. They're saying, son, open the door. Son is not opening. He's a seven years son. He's telling to his parents, he's shouting and telling them, I will open the door only on one condition. So the parents are, what? Tell us. So the son is saying, I'll open the door on one condition that you promise me that you'll buy, a, buy me a personal laptop. Uh, it's a true scenario. What did the son say? See, he's not a 15-year child or 16-year child. Seven-year boy. He's saying, I will not open the door till you don't promise me you buy me a personal laptop. A personal laptop. Uh, 
Another instance I'll give you. This happened in Pune. A 12-year boy, in the night he was in his room on his mobile doing some WhatsApp. And then it was dinner time. The mother comes to the son's room and says, son, come, uh, let's go for dinner. Father and me are waiting for you. The son, mommy, give me two minutes. Mother said, okay. Mommy, after two minutes, comes back. Son, let's go for dinner. Uh, mommy, two more minutes. So mother goes to the father and says, son is asking for two more minutes. Again, after two minutes, the mother goes, son, two more minutes over. Mommy, two more minutes. So again, the mother comes back. Now, this happened four times. Fifth time, mother goes to the son. Beta, we are waiting for dinner. Come. Mommy, two more minutes. Mommy's saturation level had gone up already. Mommy just grabbed hold of the son's mobile, took it, and went to the dining table and told the father, God knows when our son will come for dinner, let's start having dinner. So the father and the mother start having dinner. So what does this child do? This is a true scenario, I'm not exaggerating. The child, he goes to the kitchen, he takes a kitchen knife and comes to murder his mother. What does this child do? He takes this kitchen knife and comes to murder his mother. Somehow the father protects and avoids this scenario. Now these are some trailers of family life. I'm not here to tell a horror story about family life. I'm just come here to tell you the practical down-to-earth reality. Yeah. In uh, the so many challenges, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, there's a saying sometimes in lectures, uh, they say that uh, love, as f love at first sight and divorce at first fight. Uh, because the tolerance level, the patience level are going down now. And the family to live together has become more challenging. And there's a story. Uh, there was a person, he was having his wedding anniversary, his 51st wedding anniversary. He was celebrating his 51st wedding anniversary. So a lot of his friends had come. So one friend, towards the end of the anniversary, towards the end of this function, went to the husband whose 51st anniversary was being celebrated. So the friend asked him, wow, great, 51 years you lived with your wife, amazing. So the friend asked this husband that, tell me, on your 25th marriage anniversary, what did you do? How did you celebrate? So this husband said, you know, my wife, she had, and they were staying in the US, this husband and wife couple. So the husband said, actually, you know, my wife for many years was telling me that she had a deep desire to go to Beijing. Beijing is the capital of China. So the husband said, for my 50, 25th marriage anniversary, I took my wife to Beijing. Husband said, wow, great, you're a fantastic uh, husband. So the friend asked the same husband, okay, tell me for your 50th marriage anniversary, what did you do? So the husband said, for my 50th marriage anniversary, I went back to Beijing to get her back. Uh, so, <laughs> So anyway, this is just for a light moment, you know, sometimes just to the husband and wife to stay together, big, big challenge, especially in Kali Yuga, you know, the tolerance level is down, patience level is down, ah, you know, it's, yeah, it's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. And, but if we keep Krishna in the center, uh, then we can live this challenge in a nice way. Uh, people normally describe as family life as a deep, dark well. It's a deep dark well when there's no Krishna in the center. When there's no genuine spiritual life in the center, believe me, family life is a deep dark well. I, you know, I counsel families. Many families come to me. I'm, I, you'll be surprised at the type of problems they face. I'm, I, in some, I'll be embarrassed to tell some of them. I'm, it's just unbelievable some of the problems, some of the challenges and some of the difficulties the husband and wife, they face. But, it's a deep dark hole. Why? Because there's no Krishna at the center. And what happens normally in family life today? Each person basically want to get maximum sense enjoyment out of that. People get married. Why? For sense enjoyment. For the personal enjoyment. And the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Acharyas have always defined that wherever you try to keep your own sense enjoyment in the center, you'll have more misery. 
and in a family life to the degree we keep krishna and genuine spiritual life in the center to that degree we'll find less misery once devamrit maharaj he was giving a talk and he was saying that we are looking for an ended sense gratification he was saying what we individuals are looking for unended sense gratification and maharaj mentioned there are only two places you will find this only two places one is in golok vrindavan and the second is in our imagination now only these two places so we have to the degree we follow genuine spiritual life in a family life to that degree will be less problem and to that degree will be more satisfied and then in the scriptures there's a very wonderful story in reference to family life uh, the story of chitaketu maharaj now chitaketu maharaj he was a king he had fantastic big kingdom all the riches everything he had many wives also but he didn't have any single son so he was very morose regarding that so once angira rishi had come to his kingdom and chitaketu maharaj served angira rishi very well in a very humble way and he really pleased angira rishi so angira rishi asked chitaketu maharaj uh, what can i do for you so chitaketu maharaj said that uh, rishivar i don't have a son please do something so i have a son so angira muni said okay so angira muni performed a yagya performed a sacrifice and the prasad of that sacrifice he gave it to the main wife of chitaketu maharaj and when this wife took that then she later on she became pregnant and and uh, angra rishi had told previously to chitaketu chitaketu maharaj that you'll have a son but he'll be harsha shok he'll be the cause of your joy and lamentation so chitaketu maharaj basically didn't understand the statement properly he thought okay it'll be joyous because i'm not having a son and when i have a son obviously it'll be a very joyous event and he thought a lamentation he thought okay maybe you know when my son grows up uh, he'll be the only son and when he grows up he'll have a lot of riches and he may become proud so he may not be a obedient son to me so from that anger he may be a sort of source of lamentation but that's okay because at least i'm having a son uh, in english there's a saying it is a better it is better to have a blind and lame uncle than having no uncle so chitaketu maharaj had that thing in mind chalo even though my son is not obedient to me at least i'll have a son uh, but he didn't know in what way he was going to lament so when the wife delivered it was a very joyous occasion for the whole family for the whole kingdom but now the king chitaketu started giving more time and love to the first queen who had delivered the child and uh, somehow the other queens became neglected so the other queens became very envious and somehow secretly they poisoned the food of this young son and the young son died and when the young son died and when the news reached chitaketu maharaj chitaketu maharaj was totally totally devastated he was just ah his sorrow was uncontrollable his misery was to the extreme uh, it was the end of the world for him uh, because it is said to the degree we are attached to anything and when that thing is taken away to that same degree will be more miserable so chitaketu maharaj was he was so so attached to the son that when the son was taken away he was equally equally miserable and he was very very miserable i'm his wife the main wife was also totally miserable the other wives were poisoned they were just acting as if they were miserable you know so that time angra rishi and narad muni come so when they see the situation then the two sages instructed the king i'll read the exact instruction the two sages instructed the king as follows o king what relationship does the dead body for which you lament have with you and what relationship do you have with him you may you may say that you are now related as father and son but do you think that but do you think this relationship existed before 
does it does it truly truly exist exist now will it continue in the future very instructive instructions then narad muni with his mystic power he brought the dead child back to life and narad muni told the child when he came to life the child narad muni told the child that why you are causing so much moroseness to your father and son to your parents to your mother and father so when the son heard this instruction this thing then the son also replies i'll read you the exact reply of the son the dead son who now has rose into life he replies according to the results of my fruitive activities i the living being transmigrate from one body to another sometimes going going to the species of the demigods sometimes to the species of lower animals sometimes among the vegetables and sometimes to the human species therefore in which birth were these my mother and father no one is actually my mother and father how can i ex- accept these two people as my parents and then nadmuni and uh, i'm like nadmuti instructs further to chitakuti maharaj and his wife and after hearing all these valuable instructions chitakuti maharaj and his wife they come out of this family entanglement they come out of this family attachment uh, so again here we should learn that this family attachment and family entanglement it is so it's a such a big knot in a heart huh? it's a very big knot huh? to be attached to your f- wife to be attached to your husband to be attached to your son in a family to be attached to your money to be attached to your house to be attached to your business to be attached to your relatives huh? so many attachment this list goes on and on and uh, these attachments are like big knots in a heart Uh, and it's impossible to remove these family attachments impossible it's only by the causes mercy of krishna that these attachments can be removed and the family in fact um, when around 20 years back i and my wife leela manji devidas she got married around 20 years back and it was mar- it was a marriage arranged through the temple and my wife leela manji she was basically preached by bhakti rasamit maharaj who was that time devamit prabhu so after we got married we had gone to bhakti rasamit maharaj and bhakti rasamit maharaj just told us one sentence and to this day i must have repeated the sentence to n number of family people and i remember this instruction very strongly bhakti rasamit maharaj just told us one thing bhakti rasamit maharaj looked at me and told me srivast thakur das you should see your wife first as a devotee then second as your wife and maharaj told my wife leela manji that you should you should see your husband first as a vaishnav first as a devotee then second as your husband what a fantastic instruction just if we keep this concept in a married life uh a married life will be like in fact like you know it'll be like golok vrindavan uh, in fact bhakti vinod thakur he had so many children he was a magistrate of, uh, from a worldly angle so many responsibilities his whole day schedule was so so hectic but in the evening when he would come to his home he said when he would come to his home he would see his home as the spiritual world why because he put this in principle in mind he put krishna the center so in a family life when we put krishna the center and live and try to live a genuine spiritual life a family will be not different from the spiritual world and another thing is that usually we see our children as a his my child his my wife my husband you know the word my my we should see our wife and children as the property of guru and krishna if you see it with that concept we will have a very uh, happy married life uh, so like i said if you keep spiritual life in the center uh, a family life uh, will be not different from the spiritual world 
in this reference, there's a saying, a family that prays together stays together. A family that dances together advances together. A family that sings together clings together. Huh? Again, the center point, if you keep Krishna at the center, if you keep spiritual life in the center. And another thing, our attachments in family life will increase or decrease as per the association we keep. Uh, especially as grastas in family life, it is very, very important. It is like mandatory that we should have strong association of the renounced order. Very important. Uh, we should have strong association, especially of sannyasis and the brahmacharis. Uh, through that, we family people, the hard knot which is the inner life, we can get rid of that knot. And the thing is, we should cultivate these detachments in family life from the beginning itself. Sometimes we think, Are, now we've got married, we have children, let's enjoy. Later on, detachment dekha jayega. But later on, that detachment doesn't come. It's not so easy. If all our life, we've been just seeing things and working on the level as attached household and family life, Later to bring this detachment in a family life is very, very, very difficult, almost like impossible. In this reference, I would like to tell you something. Once there was a young person, he had moved to a city and he worked very hard. He didn't have any money. He started from scratch. He worked very hard, got some money. He got a small business. He made a small shop. He worked harder, got more money. He made that shop bigger like that. He made a shop very big and he had got married, he had a children, then his children got married, he had grandchildren and by this time this man had worked very hard and made a very big business uh, for his children, a very big shop. So now this man, he was very old, so sometimes he would, now basically his children had taken over the business and they were handling the business. So this old man would sometimes just come to the shop and just sit, you know. So once one uh, Rishi Muni, a sadhu had come to the shop. So the son of this old man asks uh, this uh, sadhu that, how are you, where are you going? So the sadhu said, I'm going to Banaras now. So the son said, Acha, you're going to Banaras? I have a request, I have a kind request. Uh, I have my this father, he's very old now. Can you take him to Banaras also? He's never gone to his life to Banaras. Can you take him? I'll give all the expenses, plus I'll give you some donation, Dakshina. Please kindly take my father. So that uh, sadhu said, okay, no problem. I will take your father. So the father, the son asked the father, would you like to go Banaras? Father said, okay, I will go, no problem. He was retired, he had nothing much to do. So the father and sadhu go to Banaras. So this sadhu takes this old gentleman to different various temples and uh, like that. So this old man would see the temples, bow down, just like that. And then, after seeing the temple, then this sadhu and the old man, they were walking through the streets of Banaras, and they were walking through that area where they were burning dead bodies, Samshan Ghat. So in Banaras, basically, many, many people, when they die, the family members bring the dead body to Banaras to do the last rites because it's considered very auspicious. So there were many bodies burning, many bodies burning. So as the sadhu and the old man, they were crossing, this old man just stood there still. So the dadu, sadhu saw that the old man had stopped and is looking at all these burning bodies. So the sadhu also stopped. Then after some time, this old man started weeping. Tears started coming to his eyes. So the sadhu thought, God, it looks like this old man is having uh, thoughts of renunciation, thoughts of vairagya. So the sadhu asked this old man, Ki, why are you having these tears in your eyes? And your tears are coming from your eyes. So this old man said, you know, I'm crying that I'm lamenting. I'm lamenting that why 50 years back I did not come to Banaras. I'm lamenting that, you know, that I did not come to Banaras 50 years back. If I had come to Banaras 50 years back, so many bodies are being burned. There's so much wood would be required. If I had come 50 years back, I would have started a good wood business and I would have earned much more money. So I'm lamenting that, you know, I missed this opportunity, opportunity to make more money in life. Uh, 
so the point what i'm trying to say this detachment huh? this man all the time he was thinking of vitamin m money 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 and his last stage of life also even though he's crossing all these dead bodies what is thinking paisa money so the point is in family life we have to cultivate the spirit of detachment right as early as possible prabhupad very nicely in he has given the definition of attachment in bhagavad gita chapter 2 verse 56 prabhupad defines attachment as prabhupad says attachment means accepting things for one for one's own sense gratification hmm. uh, so nice i'm like this is the definition of attachment then when t- speaking of attachment in family life uh, the scriptures mention that indra indra was once cursed he was cursed to be born in the earthly planet as a hog hog so he was born in the earthly planet as a hog then he had his wife hog he had his own children and he was living so when the curse got over the demigods requested indra that your curse is over now please come back to the heavenly planet to resume your other services So in that said no i will not want to come i am happy here i have my wife hog i have my children i am happy i don't want to come up now just imagine indra what i mean the type of facility and the position indra as a hog he was the thing is in family life we get so entangled huh? that entanglement it's so much that you know is you know you re- proper reason and logic doesn't sometimes uh, make sense to us imagine as a hog indra was happier and he didn't want to leave that hog's body just imagine what attachment family attachment can lead us to so indra de- declined to come up he said no let me live as a hog i'm very happy i want to continue living so finally after some time when his young hog children died in front of him and all his children died then indra came back to his senses then he started suffering he thought god all my children are gone ah it was a big pain to his heart then he came to his senses then he came back ah uh, as a indra in the demigod planets so again the attachment in family life it's just impossible to break that attachment attachment to one's children to wife name fame and so many things it's only by the mercy of krishna and the vaishnavas this attachment can be broken off then in bhagavad gita chapter 13 text 10 in the purport propad gives the understanding that if we want to be happy in family life we should do four things propad says the first is that chant hari krishna maha mantra second accept the remnants of food stuff offered to krishna third have some discussions on books like bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam fourth engage oneself in deity worship and prupa says that one should train the family members in this way again the center theme we should keep krishna and spiritual life in the center and when you're talking of uh, family members the scriptures give a very nice example the temporary nature of family life or the family attachment the scriptures say that we family members it is like in a river in a flowing water in the river see there are many twigs which are floating in the water see two twigs two twigs just float and come to each other they bump into each other and then one twig again in the waves lives leaves one twig and again goes and bumps in another twig again for some time it is there again goes to another twig so the scriptures say a family relationship is like that among a family members it's like two twigs we come for some time again separate again two other twigs again separate uh, it's very very temporary in nature and in fact in the, the shrimad bhagavatam hiranyakashipu when his uh, brother hinakaksh is killed by lord vishnu then hinakaksh wife and all the family members are in total lamentation they're lamenting lamenting then hiranyakashipu he goes to this family people and he is a big pandit actually in one sense big scholar and he speaks to them about family detachment uh, he tells them why are you being attached to this body and 
speaks a lot of vedic philosophy like a big sanskrit pandit and hinan kashpu he gives this analogy and example to his family people he saying why being so attached to the bodily level he said that's very temporary and hinan kashpu tells them this example he says that family relationship is like say when travelers are traveling and uh, say if they go to a restaurant or they could go to a place where they have there is cool drinking water and these travelers come together and they drink this cool water they talk to each other for some time and again separate and take to the different destinations so hinan kashpu is saying our family relationship is like that the family members who we are the relationship which we have among our different family members is like this travelers we come to this drinking point drinking water point we mingle for some time and again we family members we take to different destination so why cry over such, through such temporary relationship uh, this is the philosophy what hiran kashpu is speaking uh, if you just take out the name of hiran kashpu in the bhagavat when he's speaking in and put a sage's name it will sound as if a pure devotee is speaking uh, so again the temporary nature of a family relationship then in the scriptures the concept of vana prast is also talked about now again a scriptures why do they talk of the concept of vana prast they talk of the concept of vana prast again to show that there should be detachment in a family life again the concept of detachment in fact in family life say when we are married as family and we have uh, got children and we have not yet entered the vanaprast ashram in family life in the name of family life uh, in the name of detachment we should not become irresponsible very very important i repeat again in the name of detachment we should not become irresponsible when we are married we have children we have we have a wife and we have children we should show genuine love and concern to our wife to our children we should take care of them on properly on the physical and emotional plane uh -huh. we should not behave in a very irresponsible way uh -huh. but we should understand the spirit of detachment whenever we are taking care of a family life we show them our external love we take care of them on every level uh -huh. we we generally show our love and concern to them but we should have a spirit of detachment in our heart very important i repeat in fact this is one of the main themes i would say of my lecture today that what is that in family life in the name of detachment we should not become irresponsible huh? but internally we should have a spirit of detachment huh? but at the same time we should show genuine love care and concern to our wife to our children but again like i was mentioning to you like that this four ashrams uh, after grest ashram the husband wife they ad advised to go in the vana prast why this concept that in vanaprast ashram there's both internal and external detachment also then how now we are talking so much you all will say that okay i'm speaking so much on family problem family attachment and family miseries what is the hope huh? the scriptures tell us huh, that this family attachment we have this family entanglement which we have if we there's a way to get out of it if we genuinely take shelter of the lotus feet of the lord then through that we can come out of this family attachment and what does it means what does it mean to take uh, shelter of the lord's lotus feet uh, it means that we should do our sadhana regularly and very nicely that is you know reading hearing association uh, we should do our sadhana very regularly and most important is that we should practice what we hear uh, see we whatever guru sadhu and sadhas we hear from them we should put into action what we hear if we don't put into action what we hear then no effect and uh, that's family attachment that family bond which st still be in the heart hmm? say like for example 
if we hear the good instructions of, from the Guru Sadhu and Sastra and if we don't implement it, it's, it's as good as hardly doing anything. There's an example. Say a person, he's a person who's very sick. He goes to the best doctor. Uh, then the doctor prescribes him the medicine. This man, he goes to the best chemist shop and he takes the best medicine and he brings it and uh, he comes to his house and he puts that, that medicine in the cupboard and he doesn't take it. Will this man get any benefit? No. Till he doesn't take that medicine, he'll not get the benefit of having gone to the doctor. So in the same way, in family life, we hear so many instructions from the sannyasis, from the brahmacharis, from the scriptures. But if you don't follow them, we will not get any benefit. And when we speak of the lotus feet of the Lord, I will end with this story. Uh, when we speak of the lotus feet of the Lord, there's a story that uh, there was a pond, like talap, like there was a pond. In that pond, there were many fishes. And in that pond, every day in the morning, at seven in the morning, a fisherman, he would come knee deep in the pond, he would take his net, he would throw his net and catch fishes and go away. He, and every day he would throw his net in different directions. So all the fishes in that pond, they would always be in anxiety and always suffering that God, tomorrow maybe I, tomorrow I maybe get caught and you know, I'll die. But all these, all the big fishes, they observed that there was a young fish who'd never been in anxiety. So all the big fishes, they made a group and they went to this young fish. And the big fish told this young fish, Are, why, why, are you not, why are you not in anxiety? So this young fish said, why should I be in anxiety? So the big fish said, don't you know that this fisherman comes every day in the morning, throws his net and catches fish and goes away? The young fish said, yes, I know that. After knowing, still you're not in anxiety. The young fish said, yes, why should I be in anxiety? So the big fishes, they were a little more perplexed. They got more confused. Then the young fish said, you know, I'm not in anxiety because so far I've never been caught. And in future also, I will never get caught in this fisherman's net. So when the big fishes hear this, they get a little more shocked. They said, they tell this young fish, how can you say with so much guarantee and with so much conviction that you're never going to get caught in this fisherman's net? So the young fish says, I have one formula. I follow one rule. Young fish said, you know what I do? When this fisherman at seven in the morning, he comes in the water knee deep. So when he comes in the water, the water shakes. So I come to know that the fisherman has entered the water. So the fisherman is standing knee deep in his water. What I do is I quickly go and stand near the feet, near the feet of this fisherman. What does the small fish say? I quickly go and stand near the feet of this fisherman. And this fisherman, when he takes his net, when he throws his net, obviously that net is thrown away and this net does not come near the fisherman's feet. At least one or two feet away, the net reaches. And the net never comes near the fisherman's feet. So the small fish says, I do this always and I never get caught. But the spiritual meaning is that, the spiritual lesson is that, that when we take shelter of Lord Krishna's lotus feet, the net of Maya will never catch us. I repeat, when we take shelter of Lord Krishna's lotus feet, the net of Maya will not catch us. Hare Krishna. So we'll end with that. If anyone has any comments or any question, we can take that. So, okay, Hare Krishna, thank you so much. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai.